Here you go, just wanted to, oh, what, one finger. If you order one of my frames, they are coming. We've had a bit of a slowdown in China recently with the freight and the corona paranoia. But yeah, the frame's on their way. It might take a bit longer than normal, but you're definitely going to get yours. If you ordered it, if you paid for it, it's going to turn up to you. So appreciate your patience. And uh, I know what it's like to wait for something good. And it's frustrating, but it's out of our hands at the moment. But your frame will turn up. This is the Pragma Glycogen lightweight climbing race bike. So we're going to do a video today how to get rid of sugar, how to quit sugar in your life. Now here's some blood tests I got here. I'll do a video about these, but all you have to do is just Google up Drew Rider blood tests. And you've seen my blood tests for the last few years. This is, got these yesterday, picked them up. And uh, so yeah, everything's great. Blood sugar's great, cholesterol, hormones, great. Um, you know, estrogen's great. Hemoglobin, liver function, platelets, hematocrit, all these things are great. And I'll do a detailed video about these, especially the hormone question. People are like, you take hormones, blah, blah, blah. So we'll get to that. Be totally transparent with that video. But yeah, perfect blood test, fantastic. Vegan, 19 years. How to quit sugar. Sugar's like money, all right? Got a big bag of cash here. Sugar's like money in that without sugar, without money, <coughs> you know, got this colorful Australian money here. Without money, life's tough. You know, life's tough. Without sugar, life is impossible, you know? Like, you can sort of live without money. You can eat from bins and forage fruit, you can do that, but life without sugar, why would you want to do that? Yeah. So how to quit sugar, just stop sugar. And watch your life go downhill. Watch the amount of caffeine and stimulants and pre-workouts and middle and add all you take go up. Because with less sugar in your body, you need more stimulants. Because what the stimulants do, they increase your blood sugar. So when your blood sugar is dropping off, your muscle glycogen is dropping off, your body is attracted to stimulants because they increase that blood sugar, all right, for your cells to live off. So your cells run on, run on sugar, every cell in the human body runs on sugar. So as soon as you cut your sugar out, life gets really tough. And you'd be like, Harley, Harley, I eat rice, I eat fruit, but I don't do refined sugar. Is that okay? That's that's cool, but if you're trying to, I was talking to a guy the other day, um, he was 150 kilos, and he lost 75 kilos of roundabouts following my template, all right? He morphed, like he was losing weight so fast in Chiang Mai, Thailand. He was losing weight so fast, it was it was just like, it was insane. You know, he was just he was just like that OCD community. He had one-itis, you know, one-itis meaning, Google what one-itis what one -itis is. But Craig had one-itis for just losing the weight, following the Duramide template. He, he went from the UK to Chiang Mai, rode his bike everywhere, didn't get in a taxi, just carving up sodas, rice, fruits, chugging it down just shrinking the weight, right? But eventually he got into a bit of a, you know, Gregor thing where it's like whole foods, refined sugar's bad, and um, which a lot of people get into, you know, a lot of people get into that rut. And so he got, his performance just started going down and his weight stayed, you know, stayed off, but I would say being a 42 year old, I did notice his mood and his personality not be as, you know, as that going. And so is there one thing I can add? Yeah, can do anything. Um, he, he did say that he gained 20 pounds Recently, uh, during yeah. that time and that he was dealing with binge eating, which yeah. I would say is down to not getting the refined sugars in. Yeah. So, yeah, so he got a job. That's a good one. He says, but then he gained the weight back, you know, eating the whole foods, etc. What happened is he got a job as a delivery rider. So, you know, riding his bike around delivering food, which is a fantastic job to do. And but he wasn't having any refined sugar. So, if you're doing all those Ks and you're like, yeah, you're not having refined sugar, you're in this you know, sort of calorie restriction, almost starvation set. Because we're not designed to ride a bike, you know, five, six, ten hours a day. You know, especially with not enough carbohydrate. So even though you might think you're getting enough carbs, if your brain's going, I need I need some I want some candies, I want some, you know, I want some sugar in that fruit. If your brain's thinking that and you deny it, then you're in a starvation zone. So then you'll get that post starvation hyperphagia where you're just like rah, 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 you know, eating whatever. And you also get the, the post-starvation, uh, what are they calling it? The, uh, it's the hyperphagia, which is the appetite, and then the post-starvation obesity. obesity. So when you will, like the bikini girls get, when they do a bikini competition. Binge. Uh, yeah, taking the stimulants, taking the clenbuterol, purging, laxatives, diuretics, everything to get <laughs> sucked down, glad wrap skin for a day. And then as soon as the show's that finished that night, they're just like, rah, rah, rah. And they get like, they gain like 10 kilos in a week. And their face becomes a pumpkin and they go emotionally crazy. 
So we want to avoid that extreme hunger, right? If your body's saying, oh man, I'd love some peaches with a bit of sugar on top, mm. I'd love some sugar in a banana smoothie, yeah. That so or, or even I'd love some tinned peaches in syrup. In syrup, there you go. But I can't have that because it's got refined sugar in it. If you're that hungry, or you finish your rice meal at night time, and you're like, oh, I need something sweet, and you're like, oh, I'll have some blueberries, and you're still not satisfied, you're in starvation nation, right? So you're gonna have this post-starvation hyperphagia where one day of the week or one day, what you just go, ah, oh, stuff it, just go, rah, 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 and then you blow it out again. <laughs> so my program, it works like nothing else, all right? And it's not even my program. I've just studied animals and nature and people and coached thousands of people. And so I've actually learned from other people's mistakes and it's just great to watch it, you know, come, come around full circle. And so this Craig guy, now he's, you know, he was doing fasted training as well. And the fasted training is the worst thing you can do. One and he do. and he admits that now. Yeah, that's great. That's he a admits sign of the maturity. mistake. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's really... It is very good. That's a sign of maturity where you can go, you know what, yeah, I did that. But and, and it helps to educate it others it does. on the dangers of fasted yeah. training and how it'll fuck you up. Yeah, it, that's, that's very true, Natasha. Good reminder there. You know, and that's one thing. It's like I'm 42 and I do come across very arrogant and cocky and like, hey, hey, hey. But... It comes from a place of experience and desire to help people. I don't like seeing people suffer. I don't like seeing people, you know, spend 15 grand on the bike when they can spend three grand or whatever. Like, I mean, if you do want to spend 15 grand, go ahead. I'm just saying that I, I don't like it seeing people suffer emotionally when they want to have some refined sugar, but they say, oh, Dr. Gregor said I can't. Would you, do you want to look like Dr. Gregor and have Dr. Gregor's results? No. I don't, you know, I wouldn't want to like, no. Read the forums of the Dr. Oh, Mega fans. And, and also, if you're a female, do you want the results of the admins in the Whole Foods Facebook groups? Because I certainly don't. Do you want to look like a... I mean, I can't, I can't say that. It'd be against the rules. But, <laughs> yeah. I would. If I was a girl, I would want to look like Natasha or the other girls who are on the program. You've got Pauline and France who's lost the weight. She looks really fit. And, you know, just, it doesn't matter. Whatever body shape you've got, whether you're an ectomorph, a miso, or an endo, you're going to be your leanest self on my program. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking bikini model Clint Buterol lean where they've got abs on abs and they're just shredded and then their boobs have gone. I have to get a boob job. Unnatural, unhealthy, unsustainable. You know? And you're like, oh, look like that. And it's like, that person's on a shit ton of drugs and they're starving themselves. No, they're not. They're really disciplined. No, they're not. They're on a shit ton of drugs and they're starving themselves. And you're uneducated. And you're uneducated. And if you want to be like them, then do that. But they're going to blow out. Oh, no. So the people... Most people don't understand what's going on in the fitness industry. They don't. Lots of drugs. And you know, and that's fine. You know, we aren't saying you're a bad person. It's just that you've been lied to with all the marketing bullshit. Being tricked, being conned. Of course. So yeah. So if I was a girl, I would look like Natasha or you got know, Katie Kookaburra, who's done an amazing transformation. You know, she was quite large and starving herself with low quality mm. of life, and now she you know, gets to ride a bike. She's fit, and now she's she's making money as a professional cyclist. You know, like she's making more money as a professional cyclist and having freedom than. The, a lot of welter of women out there, you know, so, so it's just, it's just that sugar reality, okay? So it's a whole different game out there. So if you are scared of sugar, you are living like so much lower than your potential could be, you know? Yeah. In nature, we would have gotten our sugar from our fruit. There'd be, a, that's a, that's a apricot tree right there. So it shows that. So this apricot tree, you know, in nature would probably be about a million times bigger because it'd be like 60, 70 years old. And then when the summer hits, the apricots are just dripping and they're super sweet, tree ripened. And you wouldn't need added sugar because there'd be so much sucrose in that fruit. But what happens with our apricots, they've got to pick them green, they've got to get mushed up, and they ship them. All the birds like them. Yeah, they ship them. And so this when you bite into the apricot, you're like, oh, it's like flowery and where's the, where's the sugar? There's no sugar in it. Well, flowery no and mushy, I hate it. <laughs> and, uh, insufficient sugars. All right, so that's why when you add sugar, you're getting what nature would have given you. And cane sugar is whole food source anyway. For the people out there it who is. have the whole food tag, it's whole food cane source. Cane is a grass. It's grass. People will drink white, sugar white. cane juice <laughs> and then say that cane sugar is bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's hilarious. There's a chick on uh, Instagram the other day. She's called Fasting of Alice. She does party drugs on the weekend in Copenhagen. Yang. She's a party girl. You can see it in her eyes. Like, just, you know, her, her eyes are cool. She's so tired. And she's doing fast after fast after fast. And Dry fast. fasting as well. The reason why she has to do all these fasts is because her, meta her thyroid is so damaged from the, the drugs and the restriction and the anorexia and all that stuff, the yo-yo binge purge eating, that she has to start keep starving because her body's just waiting for that post-starvation obesity to kick in. And you could give her just bananas and she will become obese, you know? 
as, as obese as you get bananas, which is not much. But you know, she, because her body is just like waiting for the like, okay. So every fast you do, you just send yourself back and back and back. It's, it's a bit like you've got like a slingshot. You got like a rubber band slingshot, right? And so you here is not much pressure and then every fast you do you pull it back more and more and more and you're right back here in your tenth fast and eventually you're gonna have to let it go because you can't hold it any longer and you pop and then your, your body just goes <laughs> it just swells right up you saw her freely back in 2007 she went from you know she was like 50 kilos to 73 she gained 20 something kilos just on like tomatoes and <laughs> dates and, and not even dates then she wasn't even eating dates oh. it was like a bit of bananas a bit of banana peaches and know? zoodles so, so yeah zoodles <laughs> so she was eating like meat pies and steak and eggs sean baker sean bayer diet <laughs> she would have gained like 50 kilos right? like a uh, like that chick uh What's her name? The Biggest Loser Girls? No, no, on uh, YouTube with the with the fake name. Oh, yes, Stephanie Butter, Butterfed. Stephanie Amor Butter, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it was, is it Butter? No, Buttermore. Butter Buttermore. Okay, Buttermore. And so, yeah, she's, she's experiencing post-starvation obesity. Yeah, her boyfriend uses a lot of steroids. Jeff Nippard, he's a steroid user, which is fine. But he lies about it to sell product, which is not fine. So she would have been on the steroids as well, like Clenbuterol and maybe a bit of Anavar. And then maybe she's like, hey, I don't want this anymore. So she stopped. And then boom, she got that post clenbuterol boom. But because she'd been starving on the clenbuterol, she's now she's in post-starvation obesity, yeah. and she's got that post-starvation hyperphagia. And we don't say it's the trash anymore, we're just giving people a real life example. It's, a, it, it's, it's fact. Go follow Stephanie Buttermore, uh, where she was really skinny on the clenbuterol, which is a powerful drug, don't take that. Freely took it back, back in 2007, or no, 2005, before we were together. If you take that stuff, you've got a rebound, all right? So only take those drugs if you're prepared for the rebound weight gain, which no one wants, but no one really knows about. So I just wanna get the results now. Give me, I'll take any drug. Just give me the results. I wanna look like that girl this week. And then, <laughs> then next month, next year, you're out here. <laughs> so simple as that. Just follow the advice. And uh, I'm, not, I'm on no stims right now. There's nothing in my body. Just sugar, water, fruits. Me too, I'm on sugar, bananas and oats. Yeah, you know, for most people who have this sort of energy, you got to like pop pills and stuff. And I've done all the pills. Or, or, lives. At, or at the bare minimum, have your morning coffee, morning coffee. which is ritual for millions of people. Yeah. So if you haven't, if you're running on stims every day, then you really need to stop. If you have them once a week, okay. If you're on them every day, if you need stims to train, then man. You, you are you reducing know. your life quality. Massively. And then you are increasing your depression and anxiety. Stimulants, stimulants and anxiety go hand in hand. 1000%. Pull out the stims, anxiety goes away. I don't know anybody with depression or anxiety that doesn't use stimulants. Especially depressed anxiety that hangs around. It's okay to you know, have a bit of winter blues for a few hours. Oh yeah, there. yeah. Next. I'm I, I'm talking months, years. So you're waking up and going to bed with depression. That's lack of carbohydrate and coming down from stimulants. And stimulant usage. Hundred percent. And, and lack of carbs, lack of sugar goes hand in hand with uh, with that. And I, I know many cyclists. I've been racing for 22 years and I've seen guys as lean and skinny as me become 120 kilo blubbers yep. you know, because they cut their carbs, cut their sugars. And, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. We're not attacking anybody. It's human physiology and it's how it goes. Yeah. Just attacking the, the methods people are using. Yes. I don't want to see you suffer. I don't want more depressed people on the internet. No, 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 no. I don't want that. I don't want more people driving cars because they're so tired they can't ride a bike or they can't pay attention behind the wheel. I don't want that. That's dangerous. I don't want more people doing crazy violent attacks in the street or whatever. That guy who attacked me in January. Do you think that guy's happy with his life? Do you think he's getting enough carbs? Do you think his hormones are in balance? <laughs> no. no. You know, so I don't want that. I don't want it for anyone. I don't want it for that person either. Like, it's, it sucks to live a life of misery and aggression and hate. You, know, you can have a bit of banter and joke around. Well, that's cool, but... Otherwise, if, it eats you up. Yeah, if you're, like, living in that place of mad hate for someone and just constantly trolling people and creating fake accounts and just nasty stuff, then that's not coming from a place of hormonal balance or serotonin balance or dopamine balance. That's coming from a place of, like, self-hate, really. And that self-hate comes from when you don't have enough sugar in your, br in, your br in, your br <laughs> in your brain, then how can you like yourself? Because you feel crap, all right? So when you're feeling good you like yourself more. And when you're feeling junk, you don't like yourself. Because you're like, I don't really like it. It's like when, like when a bike's not working properly, I don't like this bike. When the gears are clicking good, the brakes work perfect, there's no slop in the headset, you love the bike. But when it's breaking down and skipping gears and crashing you, you don't like it. So there you go. See you in the road.